All right, hi everyone. Eagle from Vinus Reverie, the shop for the adventurous wine drinker. Uh, Anna's gonna join me in a second. Uh, and we're gonna have a special guest, Felipe Silva from Chamber in Chamber to discuss a uh, special wine, Amarone from uh, Veneto region. So uh, it should be a, a fun conversation. And he's about to go along with Anna. All right. All right. All right. Okay. He'll be here in a second. Yeah. There, there he you is. Are. Hola. Hi, Felipe. Thanks for joining. How's it going, guys? Good to see you both. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you, Felipe. Yes. So, uh, you, uh, uh, Felipe, before we, we get into the wine, can you give a little background on yourself? How you got into wine? You know, your your journey and and the passion behind this. Sure, sure. Um, I think for all of us that work in wine, it's always kind of like we don't ever plan to work in wine, right? It just kind of yeah. happens. And uh, I think it was the same with me. I. I grew up in Brazil and I moved to the US for an internship and my background was journalism of all yeah. things. And, you know, I had an opportunity to, you know, not only intern, but also work for a little startup tech company doing some PR and marketing work, yeah. which didn't pay at all. It was just <laughs> all that kind of like illusion of one day you're going to be rich with stocks kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I know. I just needed I needed a side job that actually paid me some kind of money and then it just happened to be a wine shop. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was what early 20s, I had no idea about wine. I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. And they hired me for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I started working there and just fell in love with the whole thing. Like not only with wine but also the the history of wine, grapes, regions and it's so much history and geography and all of that together. And I just started studying about it, and um, yeah, it, it took off from there. <laughs> and so now you're working for Chamber and Chambers, uh, which is a, a importer and distributor of uh, wines from all over the world. Can I give a yes. little overview? Yeah, uh, about the, the company. Yeah. Sure, sure. So yeah, I I, I started after that after that kind of retail uh, uh, job and retail opportunity. I moved on to the other side of the business, which is the wholesale side. Is instead of dealing with Consumers directly, I deal with people like you, who are then selecting wines to to offer for your for your clientele, and and it's it's a completely different side of the business, and I'm I'm really happy with it. Uh, the company I work for, Chambers and Chambers, has been around for almost 50 years. It's still family owned, it's female owned, mm -hmm. and uh, it's one of the very last of those traditional distributors left in California. It's still family operated. It's still mm -hmm. local. We're based in Napa. Uh, and we are importers. We import wine ourselves, and we distribute to to California and Hawaii. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, uh, do you have any questions? Do you want to showcase maybe the yeah, wine? So um, you're joining us this week, and we're showcasing Amarone. So I'm going to just share the bottle with our guests so they can see the wine we're having. And yes. um, yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about this wine? Yeah. But, Let's uh, talk. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk. Yeah. First about uh, Amarone, the region, or, yeah. or you know, like uh, kind of before we jump in the actual wine, yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about Amarone. Uh, first of all, like uh, uh, let's clarify a few things about for folks that might not know about Amarone. It's a, it's Italian wine, right? That it's and Amarone actually does not refer to a particular grape or a region, really. It's it, it's a style of wine. Mm -hmm. So when you when you hear that name Amarone, really what that means is a style of wine. It has the wine has to be produced in a certain manner in a certain form to be classified as Amarone. Uh, the region that it has to come from one particular region. That region is called Valpolicella, and that you, and you and we have we're so we're so map. Yeah. So we're Val looking at like northeastern Italy, and this would be like Valpolicella would be kind of this dark green between Suave and like Lake Garda. So so we're talking about right above. Um, Verona, uh, the city of right Verona. about Verona. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So Valpolicella is that kind of wine region that surrounds Verona. So for whoever has been already in Venice, um, you probably have passed through Verona. It's a very important city in that region. Lake Garda is right there. So you have a, this pretty uh, region with rolling hills and the the beautiful Lake Garda right right there too. So that's called Valpolicella. Amarone is the, the, the main red wine from that region. Uh, it's called Amarone di Valpolicella. So that's, that's kind of like its official name. And then um, another cool uh, fact is the, the grapes. 
that have to be in a um, oh. U.S. Um, the grapes are the grapes are indigenous to the area, and we have we have Corvina, we have Rondinella, and we have Croatina. And those there's there's a few other, a few others are uh, allowed to be uh, included in that that blend, but those three are probably the main grapes that you're gonna work with when making Amarone, especially in that bottle that you guys are trying over there. And, and Felipe, just to uh, maybe backtrack a little bit, so so. Uh... The, the grapes that you you mentioned that's the, the typically the three grapes led maybe by Corvina could be like I think the, typically the main grape uh, right. so this, what uh, Valpolicello, Ripasso, and Amarone so it's uh, three different styles made from kind of the same blend of grapes uh, and the way I understand it, it, it they kind of go up in depth so Valpolicello is, is typically the, the lightest both both in color and in taste then Ripasso he has a uh, few more drier grapes, so it's, it's more concentrated, and Amarone is the most concentrated of the three, so it's like a three-step process almost. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. So yeah. like I was saying before, Amarone is a style of wine, yeah. right? So you have to follow a certain procedure, and I, I can go over that procedure, which is quite fascinating. It's kind of a historic way of making wine in the region, and it's, it's still this, the way that they, they, these winemakers make the wine to this day. So... Once you grab you get, you get the grapes, the 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 red varietals, they're allowed in the in the in the DOC now DOCG of uh, Valpolicella. Most of these, most of the nicer producers will hand pick these grapes. They're gonna take really good care of them because these are sensitive grapes that they don't want it to be moldy, they don't want it to be cr uh, crunched or anything. So they're gonna be pretty perfect berries. They're gonna put in this room in the winery. And, it's, and the, these grapes are gonna go through this process called apacimiento. And what that is, is basically the drying of the grapes in this room for about three months. That's the average time that it takes for the grapes to lose a little bit of the water. The water evaporates and then you get just a concentrated sugar, sugary grape that's then left for fermentation. That is a very, very laborious, job and most of this the nicer wineries will, will, will make that process happen in a more natural way and really putting the grapes in this room and let them take the, the time to dry and other wineries we're going to use some some sort of like rushed process that's going to kind of mimic that but try to make more more wine out of that so it's it's important for us to know which wineries are doing which way and respecting more the, the tradition. So that's why I'm happy that you guys have Itanuta Sant'Antonio there, which is a winery that's been around since 1995. It's a family winery. It's owned by four brothers, the, the, the Castagnetti brothers. And they, their motto really is to make great Amarone, respecting the traditions of Amarone, but also um, respecting the integrity of the fruit and showing the soils and the nuance of the wine, right? Because Amarone could be quite a big, explosive, chocolatey wine sometimes. It's, it's, but it's, it's nice to have someone trying to actually show the potential of the grape in that region. So this, these guys are doing that. Yeah, um, it sounds kind of um, time consuming. And, you know, if you're drying the grapes, you're losing volume of the liquid. So that means production is going to be less too. Very right. Very right. Besides that, after that, after the fermentation, the, the fermentation is also a very slow process. They go through a very slow, cold fermentation. And then to have that, have that grape really concentrate its, its sugar and alcohol contents. And then they go through about two to three years of aging in barrels minimum to get to to an additional bottle release and, and so forth. So with Amarone, we typically see older vintages being current. So what you have there, I believe, is a 2015 vintage of Amarone. That's that's a, a, a current release for that producer. So it's a pretty, pretty interesting. That's nice, yeah. And uh, Felipe, just to kind of uh, jump on what you were saying, so Amarone, it's a you know relatively popular. Sorry, it's a premium wine. It's it's always premium. Uh, so it's uh, 
there's no like bargain amaronis. Uh, uh, there's not gonna be. Yeah, there's not gonna be a bottom shelf amaroni. To be very aware, be very wary of those. <laughs> yeah, uh, amaroni in essence is a top shelf wine. It takes time. It takes work. And it takes money to make. Um, with that said, though, bringing back what you kind of briefly mentioned, there are other styles of amaroni. Of not amaroni. There are other styles of Valpolicella wines that would be kind of like mimic the Amarone potentials. And one of them is Ripasso, which is the one I opened today. I actually have had a bottle of this. It's Peduta <laughs> Sant'Antonio Ripasso. So it's this, the, the younger brother of what you have there. Okay. Uh, and the Ripasso wine is basically the Valpolicella grapes, the same grapes that they use for the Amarone, but they don't go through that drying of the grapes. So they ferment that. And uh, the one extra step they take for that wine is they will uh, let that stay in contact during fermentation with the pumice of the, the, the grapes that went through a pasimiento. So they see a little bit of that Amarone character of richness and chocolatey um, bitterness that's so textbook from that style. But, you no, know, that, that, it's, it's such an uh, awesome process. And I, I think it's based on the, uh, some of the oldest uh, winemaking processes in the world, uh, of, like yes. grapes. Um, and, and, and yeah, I, I think uh, the, the one thing that you were mentioning and, and, and that I know from what I've read is that, yeah, there's wineries who, who uh, take special care of the grapes and use uh, 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 the best grapes for the process, but that's not everybody because a lot of it do it for economic reasons. And I think uh, the rules, I think, of the region is that 70% of the grapes could be dried, oh, and that's like the only rule. So, so you don't need to have top quality grapes in order to, to do the wine. That's why these guys are known for the quality of the wines. Not everybody's known for the quality of, of Amarone wines. Yeah. Exactly. Now, because Amarone, it's, 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 there's such a lengthy process, and the, the wine could be masked, right? Once that wine sees that much time in oak, and that's some, that could be brand new French barrels, you can kind of mask any defect from the your original source, the original grape. So even if you have inferior quality of of grapes, you can kind of mask it by by putting in a very a brand new French French barrel and then kind of give it a little coat of vanilla or something. Yeah. So a lot yeah. of a lot of those more industrialized producers will do that, will resort to that technique so that they can crank out more wine and make more money. So it's good to have a shop like yours that understand what it takes to make good Amarone and bring some uh, some really smaller, smaller producers like Tenuto Sant Antonio, but they're dedicated to make a juice that is more relevant to the region and that that's kind of certified quality there. Um, so thank well, you for it, having that wine there. <laughs> that's what we were saying. They're, uh, I'm wrong, they're all expensive, but they're not all highly acclaimed. And, and you know, this wine uh, got great scores. I think Robert Parker gave you 93 points. Uh, yeah, everybody. Uh, James Suckley. Yes, yeah, yes. White so, Spirits, so, very high points. So, so yes. Yeah. So, Amarone does not always get high scores. So it's, it's not always a uh, quality uh, wine, even though, like I said, it's always expensive. Yeah, yeah. It could be sometimes just very high in alcohol, yeah. get to 16 and sometimes 17%. And you have a very deep, dark chocolatey quality. That's kind of like your textbook quality is that bitter chocolate note from Amarone. You got that right away. Better producers, though, will you get more of a, a savory, a spicy. And I'm really glad you, you mentioned the cloves and all of, of those notes because you can get a whole secondary and tertiary levels of, of notes and aromas in the wine when it comes from better sites, better soils, better grapes. Okay. Well, I you know, tested the, the, the wine beforehand and she was actually, you know, a lot of, what were the notes that, that uh, popped up to you? Yeah, so I wrote down um, like dark cherry, um, like bitter chocolate and um i wrote cloves because yeah. I, I got some spice there and then tobacco and just very nice um you know tannic you know finish at the end and so. you asked me to to smell the yeah i did so you know i i cook quite a lot mm. so i have a extensive yeah. spice cabinet and i wasn't sure what spice it was so i was pulling them out and i was i was making him smell it so these are cloves <laughs> yes ground yeah. cloves that i have and i was like i think that it's cloves what what do you think felipe <laughs> I, I hey I, I'll take I'll take clothes any day. <laughs> I think I think it's a, it's it's a good testament of of the quality of the wine, 
And uh, to talk about the particular wine you have there, Igor, yes. you have the you have the flagship wine from Tenuta Sant Antonio called Castagneri Selezione. So that's kind of like their their main. Um, they have another Amarone they make. It's a single vineyard, a little pricier. That one is a great Amarone for someone who's experimenting with that style, want to try something that is a quality Amarone, but it's a little bit more accessible, especially on that size that I believe you're carrying the 375 bottle, which is great for two people for a dinner night. And then you can spend less than $30 and have a really top quality Amarone on your dinner table. I think that's, that's pretty genius. <laughs> So, you know, uh, just my, my two cents on, on when I was, uh, while Felipe was giving us all this fun information, I was tasting the wine. So a lot of spices, uh, very concentrated wine. I mean, it looks like like, like that. I don't know if it uh, came off on on uh, video, but it's very... It's, it's very, yeah, I would deep. say medium to full body, very concentrated. But very balanced, too. So, so it, and yeah. you, you, what you're saying, uh, vanilla does not dominate, which is like a, a sign yeah. of oak or over oak. Mm -hmm. uh, so, oh. so, yeah, uh, right. beautiful yeah. wine. Yeah, these guys are working with better soil. They have a soil they call Skaya. It's a terminology that they use for this kind of like more um, more rocky climbs, uh, clay with limestone. Uh, it, it's reminiscent of, of Parmesan cheese. And they give this name called Skaya. So that's a very typical soil for this producer. And they, that gives, that allows them to give a little more structure to the wine, also a little bit of a higher acid content, which balances off that richness that is so, so famous of, of Amarone. It's funny because I, I was reading a similar thing about that because uh, a lot of Amarone is made like on the western side of Valpolicello, but they're like a little more east. So it has a different soil structure, which gives it uh, more yeah. acidity and more kind of black cherry character. So it's, it's fascinating. Yeah soil differentiate the, the end product yeah yeah all right Felipe, i mean this is such a you know fun overview for, for such a you know fun and delicious wine uh before we let you go uh, uh, what are you liking right now what's your uh, uh wine of choice I, I, anything you drank in the last couple of weeks that you're like all right this is you know <laughs> nice tough question there yeah what I'm drinking, I so yeah. In this kind of job, I drink everything every day, right? I have, I'm always, I always have a bag full of wines every day. But yeah, my jam is always going to be German Riesling. That's yeah. what I, if I, if I am to open a bottle at home, it's always going to be a nice German Riesling, drier preferably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's my jam. <laughs> well, music to our ears. We're big, we're big Riesling fans in our house too. So yay! <laughs> you just have to convert more people. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Very there. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Felipe, for joining our show. I appreciate the show for the adventurous wine drinker, and this is definitely an adventurous wine. So we're glad you're able to join us and, and talk through it with us. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks a lot for having me. This, this is great. Awesome. Thank you, Felipe. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye, guys.